Star Atlas is coming out, um, and they are using the brand new Unreal Engine 5 from Epic Games. Now, I have used Unreal Engine 5 a little bit here and there, and it's uh, it's pretty good. They mainly use blueprints, which is basically like you set up a code and you have it do whatever you want, except that you don't even know how you don't even have to know how to code. But you can have that set up in a certain way that you can use it over and over again in different parts of the current project or a project somewhere else, like in a completely different game. Super useful tool. Um, I really feel Unreal Engine 5 is going to completely eliminate the competition, um, like the little neck and neck, completely eliminate that with Unity. I like Unreal's just going to blow it out of the water, especially lately since Unity is going really ad heavy and just, it's not developer focused anymore. I don't know. It's just completely different. Now, when I first started doing gaming stuff, Unity was like the one everybody said, hey, that's the one that you should choose. But I think Unreal's really stepping it up here, and I'm glad that I'm able to, uh, to just look at some of the stuff that's coming out. So, Star Atlas is. Uh, the showroom is the only thing we're able to see right now. It's going to be many, many years before this is fully developed, just like a lot of uh, really heavy games. But the showroom itself is 10 gigs, so I'm a little worried about what a full-size game is going to be. Because while it is a lot of detail, it's not even close to finished. Like, just the showroom itself, the ships and stuff... And I'm going to show you it, but it's just, uh, I'm really worried about how big this game is going to be. Now, you will need to make a wallet. So this is crypto orientated. Um, I actually ended up making two wallets. I made one for the game specifically, just in case. And then I made a phantom wallet, which is what everybody recommends that you do. Um, you will want to probably download phantom app on your phone. Um, but more than anything, you'll you'll want to open up your browser and download a uh, phantom wallet uh, widget, I think is what it's called. But yeah, so the ship data for your character is going to be located in the wallet that you make. Now, as we're loading in, the first thing you're going to notice is it is slow. It's pretty, but it's, it's just slow. Um, it's got a lot of motion blur, like I can look around and I feel like that makes it even worse. Now that is one of the biggest complaints any gamer is going to have, especially people who are testing this, is that the motion blur is just ridiculous, which is going to technically bring me into my next problem, is the option menu really doesn't have a whole lot of options, especially considering that it's like, like the lowest setting is high, but like Especially considering that this is a showroom or a, a player's first chance at looking at the game, not having really a whole lot of options. And I'm going to let you in on a secret for development, um, especially in Unreal Engine, is there's plenty of options to be able to edit. Um, like Just like any other game, it, like there's, there's, trust me, there's plenty of room for editing. Um, not having the options in there is not good, <laughs> especially not being able to turn off motion blur. I think that's just dumb. All right, but a lot of people are not going to be able to load into this uh, just because of the graphics are so heavy. It's quiet. It's got good surround sound. Um, this this character was definitely made in third person. Uh, you can scroll the wheel to make it go into first person. But uh, the design of the character itself was definitely initially made for a third person game. And you would just... I mean, obviously you can tell right now it's in third person, but... You can just tell by the way the characters move that it was actually a... Uh, it was a Unity blueprint. And then they they put in their own animations and stuff for the character. Here, I showed you scroll, using the scroll wheel to go into first person. Um, it's pretty fluid. 
music's a really perfect tone. Like, it's a good theme. I mean, I know it's going to take a really long time to make this game, but, like, the showroom itself is really nicely made. Let's actually go ahead and explore some of the details inside the showroom. The foot sound effects are good. Reflections are pretty dope. The loading screen's pretty good. Um, so the teleportation, you can't really go anywhere other than that main building that we're in. Here's a whole bunch of the ships that we can take a look at. Um, I believe they're all purchasable, but they are far from uh, accomplished. Now these ships look really good. If I'm not mistaken, um, after looking into them, I believe they're all made in Blender, uh, which is very reputable source yeah these are uh, beautiful um they're expensive though um some of those bigger ones are easily around eighty thousand dollars which i don't know how really anybody's gonna afford that except like i guess like the top people of a guild or a clan at like the top of all of them Alright, so um, I was sent a couple of ships to check out, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Okay, so we can walk through some of the walls still. It's weird, some of the textures don't load correctly. It was very lonely out here too. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can see immediately um, the blue tent. It honestly just feels like it's a... Uh, like just a blue light, but the textures just aren't there. There's just no textures. And we could walk through the ship. Yeah, so there's really nothing clickable in here, but even from back here, we can still kind of interact with the big garage door, which will open and close. So I imagine that just means that when we are able to finally fly, which, remember, this is a showroom, we can't do anything. But even as a showroom, I'm a little disappointed that we can't actually see these ships or how we even interact with them anyway so I spent a good amount of time trying to uh, basically glitch the game or do anything weird with the game um, I think the game is just so unfinished that it's not even really glitchable like it's just objects like there's so little that you can interact with and do that uh, glitching it really really is impossible now there is a height ceiling so you can't really go much higher than the building um, and you could test that with the camera uh, there's a lot of weird object boxes that you can't jump up into like you can't jump in here unless you're on the sidewalk let's let's look around here's the limit of your horizon Got a little green barrier. It's not like a crappy barrier either. It's like a like a digital glitch barrier, which is kind of cool. Like they definitely spent a lot of energy on the detail, but I'm curious if they really like. I'm curious if they just had one developer locked into this room, and that's all he was allowed to do was touch this area. Because that, that's how I would, would be. Like, if I was just... Let's say I was making a Minecraft server, and I was told to make the spawn, and that's it. Bro, I'd have that spawn decked out. But 
that doesn't necessarily mean the rest of the world's going to be good. That just means that the initial showroom is going to be awesome because that's all I was allowed to work on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is the train. I'd imagine eventually we'd be able to walk into it. We can't walk into it right now. Um, it probably transport us into the city or something. I'm not really sure yet. Now they do have a little sample of what the plant systems are going to look like, which is very unique. Um, I'm curious of what the uh, uh, like the mobs or the AI system is going to look like. I would love to know kind of kind of creatures we'll be fighting, or if this is just strictly going to be an investment-based game, which would be kind of disappointing. I, I want to fly, you know what I mean? Like, I need more depth than just, hey, this ship is worth however much, um, and there's only a limited number, so if you have it, then hey, you can sell it and make more money. No, I want, I want that ship to actually mean something other than it's worth. Like, But if it comes to the point where, hey, you can lose an $80,000 ship by crashing it into the next planet, that's kind of fucked up. So I am trying to kind of glitch the game here. Um, I do a few things, like I try to jump in between the sliding part and the wall to see if it would crush me, uh, but it just kind of like, it doesn't work. It just kind of pushes me out of the way. So as for glitching it, it doesn't really work. But there is some stuff on the ceiling, on the roof, and the only way I've been able to really find a way to get to it easily by walking up the tallest one of uh, these door to panel things. Alright, we're at the top. Can't imagine what they're gonna put up here. Like they they like I said, they went all out on details. The sound effects are good. Just wish they had a little bit more. Okay. I don't know why, but this is making the game really slow. Um, after a few minutes, it it kind of like catches back up to normal. But I guess it's just registering that I have this new outfit. And I think we're gonna have to go into camera mode to be able to see what character this is. Well, that's cool. So there's a little trophy right there, and get a new new suit um, it's the suit that's advertising the kind of as the the face plate of the game all right we're in camera mode it glitched out a couple times so I had to like go in and out and switch characters to get it to work so that's the character standing on a head that's the character that we turn into cool let's uh could possibly use that as a thumbnail you know Nice. Okay. Let's see if we can switch characters again and try it again. Yeah, it's a little glitchy when we switch. Okay, it works now. Yep. Little alien girl. I don't think we're always her, but if, she, if, if we are, she's got a nice ass. I don't know the purpose of having the light behind your head, though. Like, we're not going to be able to see anything back there. Anyway, so there's really not much else that we can look at, and there's currently a blub, a blug, well, yeah, I was going to say glitch and bug at the same time. There's currently a weird issue where when you're trying to load in, um, it's like one of the Solana, Solana nodes aren't readable or there's too many requests or something either way it's failing us so we're gonna have to go to this online showroom which basically is just um, you connect your wallet using the widget thing in your in your menu and uh, it's like a little platform and you have your vehicles on um, and thanks to my sponsor Tim thank you so much but 
thanks to Tim, we are able to see um, three of these vehicles in the game. So this is the Fimble Airbike. It's a classified as an extra extra small vehicle. Clearly, I can't see two people being able to ride this, but this is definitely a good way to get around. Um, yeah, it looks good. I, it looks strictly like a like a fast transport vehicle. It doesn't seem to have any guns on it. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just all power. I mean, it does technically say it's a racer, so uh, I'm not surprised by that. Let's let's take a look at the other vehicle. Here we have the the Opal Jet. It's definitely much bigger. It's I guess it's classified as a racer as well. Um, though it doesn't look like a racer, I guess. It's kind of like a praying mantis. Like a yellow praying mantis. Now I'm using the the, the Fimble air bike to be able to look closer to the Opal because it, it, you just can't zoom in. Like It won't let you zoom in much farther. Um, but yeah, the just the texture work looks really good. Like it looks like if they put this much work into the the whole game, like the game as a whole, it would be amazing. I just hope it doesn't actually take like seven more years. That would suck. I want to play, man. I want to shoot people down. Get some get some rocks. You know, if it's strictly PvP based, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. People, you know, hacking and um, here's the Pierce X4, by the way. People are hacking. It looks like it has two guns on the bottom too. Um, and people just being toxic for no reason, and or you know, the inevitable. There's not going to be anybody playing in however many years or whatever. I want there to be a very well balanced PVE setup. Um, to counterbalance if there's not going to be any players. Or let's say in your really low tier area, it's going to be discouraging for any new people to not see anybody. It's going to feel like a empty game, you know what I mean? So it definitely needs to make sure it has a balance of um, environment in there. Because as we saw in the showroom, it's just a showroom. I mean, is that what the whole game is going to be like? If there's no people, it's just going to be empty? Uh, you know, I hope not. <laughs> But yeah, everything looks good. And the other thing, the reason that I say it looks like it was made in Blender is if we zoom in super close on these vehicles, um, you can see that they're actually not super detailed. It's the way that, uh, like the sheen on it. Um, so they're called the diffusion map, the albedo map, um, which I believe there was actually the same map pretty much the metallic map and the uh, um, roughness map the maps and the texture maps themselves honestly make or break the way something looks and I think that's what's happening here I think the the actual maps themselves are what's making it look like it's super detailed but if you zoom in you kind of see that it's not actually the way I see it, these were made super big in Blender and then made super tiny um, when they were transported into the game. But yeah. So I don't know. It's up in the air. It's really just up to where the devs in their heart take this game. If they take it just for a money grab, because you know Solano's a risky coin to be into. Or if they they want this to be a legitimate game. But yeah, you can see how 
weak the details are when you're actually zoomed in. Let's take a look at some of these ships in the marketplace. It's just crazy to think mm. that this is a hundred thousand dollar ship. You know how few, how many people have a hundred thousand dollar cars? Not a whole lot of people. The fact that anybody can has that amount of money to be able to spend in the game, like, dude, I, I just fucking sponsor me, man. Like, hell. <laughs> So we have the option between these three factions to choose. And originally I kind of wanted to choose Ani. Um, it, I wanted the stealth capabilities because I typically play, I uh, avoid people, try to do my own thing, but it's not very well supported. Like the highest asset value that our top member ha would have an Ani is 833, um, just not much. Both of the other two factions have twice as much as that, which means their ships are just much, much better, which in the long run is, is like very noticeable. So it was between, um, what was it, Uster and Mud, and I was like in mud or was like an Uster next, uh, but the the team itself doesn't seem to have a whole lot of high valued assets. So I I just went ahead and clicked on mud and tried that one out. Of course, you're not technically locked into mud. You could switch. Um, like you just make another wallet and switch teams or just choose a different team and you'll be good. But I went, went ahead with MUD and uh, the our sponsor actually has a guild going on so I'll be most likely joining that one. And we're going to try to have everybody's uh, faction into it which makes absolute sense. You know you kind of want the pros and cons of everybody joined together to make a balanced team. But yeah, it's crazy. This dude's got a $2 million net worth. And uh, we're talking USD. Like, I, I, I don't even... I, the game's not even a game yet. I, I don't even... I don't even know. Alright, I'm out.